Hello. Um, welcome back. <laughs> We're here in a an old farm that I had that was a moss farm, and we have revamped it. Originally, there was one of these units, and it wasn't as good as it is now. I've revamped it. I've redone it, and I've kind of saved the last bit. Um, we Instead of just having one, we're going up to four, which is cool. So we're making, did I say it? It's a moss farm. I hope I said that. Um, and I left one of the slices here to show you how it's made and kind of what it does. Um, it, I think it's pretty unique. I haven't seen anything quite like it. Um, originally, I was basing it off of an Ethos Lab design, but I don't think it really qualifies as what he does. He has a very different design. Mine uses a lot more pistons. It's a lot more resource intensive. It's probably probably worse if we're being honest, but it's it's different and unique and it uses something that I don't see people use very much. Um, I'm just going to start building, by the way, just uh, get to a point where we can talk about it. Um, basically, what we're doing is these stairs here are going to be waterlogged. So they're going to have water in them. And I chose the worst slice to show you on because there's a bug with the um, stairs where they don't autofill when they're pointed this direction. Watch. It normally, when you push one here, that should be an infinite water source, but it's not. And it's only when the stairs have the top part facing this direction, which is north. Um, works on all the other ones, just this direction. So we will fill that up, um, get our sticky pistons out, put the sticky pistons under the waterlogged stairs. Yeah, what's happening? Maybe E is what's happening. Um, then I the glass is not necessary at all, but I think it looks cool, so. I put it there. Um, we go two blocks up over the glass, two blocks up. Um, again, glass is not necessary up here either. It's just uh, for looks. And then we need our pistons again, and we're going to put pistons facing down here. Cool. Uh, back up we go. We get a torch, a redstone. I know this is inefficient because this technically powers that, but I put redstone on all of them for consistency. Um, blocks behind all of the pistons here with redstone on those. And then two blocks out and block down so that we can bring our redstone up the repeater just one tick and i think that's everything except for now we need to put in the lava and again if you're trying to be the most efficient you don't need to put lava in every slot but it uh makes it feel complete to me especially now that lava is a renewable resource all right, I think that's that slice completed. And just to give you an idea of what's happening, I think we can show it off with a button press. Um, let me describe what's going to happen so you can be ready to see what's going to happen. Before. Oh, I didn't finish. Did not finish. Alternating slime and honey. Now we're done. Okay, so what's going to happen? We're going to push this button. It's going to make these pish... Pistons, pistons extend, um, and it's going to pull this stone block with it. Then, before it can retract, there's this slight delay up here. So before it comes back, both the piston and the stone are extended. It's going to power that line, which will turn off these hopper or these pistons. So this pushes this stone out, and then this one pulls it up briefly. This one re will retract, and then it'll put the stone back down into the line. That seems overly complicated, but it allows us to have 
technically an infinite floor of stone generators. I went for, you know, it's a seven by seven design because moss grows in seven by seven, but you could have, it's tileable, you know, you could have this go as far down as you like. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm gonna use this for some other things in the future because it's it's really nice to have a tileable stone generator. So now that I've described it, I'm gonna press it. We'll see this push out. I'm gonna knock this block. Oh, well, you see the stone generating working. Um, just for visibility, I'm going to knock this out. So you'll see it push over, stone pulls up, slime blo uh, block pulls back, and then it puts the stone back in line. See that? Now, with our hopper clock, the stone button won't let it stay out as long as it is, so it'll go a little bit quicker. There won't be water pouring out every time, but that was just for demonstration purposes. And then to link all the sides up, um, I'm just using some repeaters there and there. And I think this one's all, oop, not link all of it up. Um, that should build all of it. And then I link the two sides by just putting them next to each other. And this repeater from this unit just sends it on its way. So pretty straightforward. Um, now we got to get to the inside. So the first thing I want to do is I want to hook it up and show the stone generation. Um, I'm going to pull the power line straight out of this one. And we'll probably move this in the end, but for the moment, this should work. Probably need another repeater here. So now if I turn this on, yeah, you see there's no water pouring out or anything like that. Um, it does seem slower than it will, like it looks like it can be faster and that's totally true, except for on this side, you can see the water needs time to completely filter all items. I'm out of bone meal in there, so that's why it's not going, but. Um, okay, so I think we have all the stone generated. So now we can go in with some other components. We need some servers, we'll need some repeaters. Oh, I was prepared. Let's use more. Mind. Um, and trapdoors, actually. So we need those. And you need three trapdoors per uh, generator. In the middle here, your moss block will go there. We need dispensers, too. Oh, gosh. All right, so we need dispensers here. It's going to be pointing into there with a piston on top that's going to clear. Oops. Going to clear <laughs> the top. Otherwise, it will cause the moss to not spread. And then I don't have hoppers either. I'm very prepared, as you can see. Hopper line going up. And then we're going to clear out some of the top. And I will show you what I build up there. All right. So from the edge farthest from the source on the third section, we go up from the torch that we had already placed. We place another torch on top. Repeater four, repeater four ticks, repeater one tick, a slab. And this is just from this point forward. This is a pulse extender. This is to let the water or the trapdoor is open for longer, so the water has longer to wash out the moss. And this observer is pointing into the piston that we placed earlier. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, let's throw in some bone meal. I don't have a collection system built yet because hopper speed is not good enough. 
it starts stacking up on top of the hopper, which is awesome and terrible because we got to fix it. Um, so we throw some bone meal in there. Do and flip the switch, and we should start to see. Yeah, see it grew, it washes, grows again, it washes. Just as the water's about to hit, it grows. Trying to make sure all the sides are working. Looks like they are. That was a nice big bro. Probably don't want the volume even even lower. I'm gonna... Yeah, and so we have the waters kind of offset in the back. I feel like the still kind of loud. Um, we're just gonna bring it down to twenty. Yeah, that's better. So in the back we have the trapdoors in the back corners, but in the front we have this one not in the corner. It's offset because it makes it uh, there's no dead spots basically. And then I have them all filtering over to here. You see the little ice there. Right now they're just dropping on the ground. But if I put hoppers here, it's not good enough. We're gonna have to do some ice and water item systems, which will be really fun because I don't normally get to do that or have a reason to do that. Um, I will let this keep going. I had one on me and I will chuck all of the out, oh, but it seems like with this system, you get a two to one return on what you put in. So if I put in a stack of oatmeal, I get at least two stacks back. Um, which is great. See, works pretty well. I'll hook up the other top over there. And then, um, then we really got to work on a collection system and a composting system. I think this is one of the, the best farms to see to, to make in general. It's really fun. You stop it, it leaves all the stuff in here, though. Come on. Um, just because there's so many different components, there's the stone generator that you have to make, then you have to spread the moss, and you have to find a way to collect the moss, which this brilliantly combines the stone generation and the collection. Um, then you have to collect all the stuff, then you have to process it all, and then finally, after doing all of that, you can restock it and you get your product. So there's a lot of components to a moss farm, which is really cool. I like that a lot. It's not, you know, the too tall flower farm where you just bone meal it. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with having both types, but I'm very glad that there's variety. Um, so I'll hook this other one up and then I'll get them all cranking and figure out what we're going to do to process all this moss. All right, I have, I think, completed everything. I'm gonna flip it on. And I put a stack of bone meal into each piece, each uh, section. Let's make sure that this one's working. This is the one I did most recently. Yeah, you can still, there's, you can see there's still uh, like stone bricks there. I kind of want to see what it would be like with the lag. Now that we've learned about the threaded chunk uh, setting, it's a little laggy when I'm using all of them and I'm down here. Um, I don't want to show you what's up there because it needs a lot of work before I feel comfortable showing it. Um, let me just knock out all of my little step ladders here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll let this run for uh, until it uses the stack of bone meal and I'll throw it all in a compost bin and I will see how much we get out of it. So we're using four stacks and, and we came out with three stacks and 36 bonus bone meal. So not too bad. It wasn't two times, um, but it is kind of a luck of the, the draw with the composter. It depends on, and with the moss growth, it depends on how much you grow and how much you get per compost. But it's always positive, which is why you kind of want to make more than one, um, just because small growth is great, but if you do it a lot, it amounts to something much bigger. Um, 
Next thing we really got to do is we got to make a better composter system. This has been so sad. I had to wait so long. I added an extra composter and it still took forever. So we're going to have all these items here. I figure the best way to handle it is to maybe bring it to the middle and down the line. I've not handled uh, like aligning items before with water streams. So I might have to look up some information on that. Um, but I'm going to guesstimate that four composters per unit should handle enough. And then if not, we'll have to add more. So I might just build it for one first. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Oh boy. It's been a minute. We've had problems, guys. Let's take a quick look. We were using the farm. It was working great continuously over and over, working great. And then one time, I don't know what happened, but it broke so bad. Every single side had some breakage where, best I can tell, the slimes pushed out and then cobblestone generated. And I don't know how cobblestone generated. It makes no sense, but cobblestone did generate. And then when the slime pulled back, it pulled all the stairs back and broke the water and the water flooded out. Of the it, was, it was a nightmare. So we've had a little bit of a redesign. We have target blocks underneath and then furnaces here so that that can't happen. Oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. Um, I feel like there were more nightmares than that. Oh, we've yeah, we've started putting a collection system in this beautiful thing, which we're gonna look at in a little bit, um, is not efficient, but it's cool. And that's the thing, you, you can make the most efficient farms. And then I'm gonna tell you, there are people out there that'll do it better and then I don't know kind of if you're going for the most efficient that's fine you do you but i think it's better to have a farm especially if you design it that also incorporates some of your personality and i think this is part of it it looks cool i guess you don't know what that's for yet but um real quick i did a quick test we put 24 stacks of bone meal in and i haven't peeked just yet we have our composter set up back here and uh, we align items in our water stream so it shoots over here. The honey block isn't a full block, so it aligns on that. So it can be both um, slid on the ice and picked up by the hoppers. So that's what the alignment does. There's actually a hopper under there too, which I guess I can't access from up here. But it slides down and all these hoppers will pick up if they are empty enough. And then they compost. And then, moment of truth, 24 stacks in. 24 would have been to about there. So just about double, um, which holds up. I mean, the true test is how many items per hour, but I just don't have a way of calculating items per hour. Um, okay, real quick, let's grab four stacks and I want to start the farm up and then show you the item collection because I think it's really cool. I just think it's neat. Uh, it's been kind of a nightmare, and I'm still not done. We Obviously, I'm manually loading all of this, and that's not how it should be. Um, now that we have that chest of bone meal, I know where the output is, and I can start running a water stream around to go over all of these hoppers that I'm filling right now. So we can have it automatically fill itself, and we can just turn it on or off. Uh, okay. Let's turn the farm on. And see what we see. Okay, so. Oh, thank goodness it's working. It worries me every time now. And our items go into. Here. And it's very satisfying to stand here and watch it all happen. And then they get dropped down here. And I left this side open so you can see what I'm doing. So they get dropped down here. And I push them. And I kind of bank them off of that. And it pushes them from this block at an angle a little bit. So it's not perfectly lined up. And then this is the part that's cool. Oh, man. 
Isn't that something? And you can tell it's a little choppy, but it's very satisfying. Very cool. Um, and then I still have this staircase up so I can show you what's on top. Pulls over, goes over, and it kind of goes in waves because it's being generated in waves. Then, still kind of hopping around on all the scaffolding up here. Then we have it come down this way and align itself on that honey block. And it gets pushed down this way. For the moment, I've locked these hoppers so that I can see full efficiency of the farm. Um, but these would be for azaleas. Moss blocks and flowering azaleas so that I could eventually maybe put them in shulkers. And then anything that's not captured by that gets sent over here, realigned, sent down here to be composted. So, not too shabby. Um, the only thing left to do is to make it so it fills itself back up. I think that's straightforward enough, especially if you've gotten through this far in the video. You probably know how that's going to happen. But man, I love watching them slide in from the bottom. <laughs> it's so cool. Very satisfying. Um, and all of this is to help with project that we're going to be doing up there, but again, I have not gotten that to a spot that I'm ready to share. Um, and then I got to clean up in here, so I guess the next step is probably to do the automated refilling and then beautify it up. Well, I'll probably won't beautify it yet because honestly, I'm, I've been down here for so long, I'm ready to get out. <laughs> so... Um, I think that's going to wrap this one up. It's kind of an interesting video. Uh, don't look up there. But it's, it's a fun build that we did. And I don't know. Hopefully it, it inspires you. I think moss farms are some of the best farms that you could do to increase your understanding of how things work. There are so many different components and each one takes a small bit to show that it's working. So like stone generator, boom, that's something that you can work on and make work and then maybe make it tileable. Boom, that's something you can make work and then well, grow moss. There's a bunch of small goals. So instead of something like let's take the hardest farm that I've ever worked on, like a shulker farm which is like it's either working or it isn't. It's this huge project that you have to take on. And once you get it all done, you finally get a shulker going. And then it, you know you start seeing it work. As opposed to this, where it's not one big thing, it's a bunch of small things that you can knock out one at a time. So this is a great farm to learn with. I think I've run out of the stack of bone meal we put in there. Very cool. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back next time. Hope to see you. Bye.